Coming up on WCGR News, we'll be getting to know the activists in the Human Rights Club. And our senior field reporter, K-Mel, has the final five contestants on his current events trivia. Your news and more on WCGR. Hi, I'm Julius Little. And I'm Samantha Bredesen. One class on campus is making waves when it comes to international human rights. The class, titled Genocide, is a course offered by the Honors College, investigating genocide since World War II. Throughout the semester, the class has learned about ways genocide start, warning signs, and ways it can be stopped. In the process, the class even had a chance to Skype with Savo Haleda, a survivor of the Bosnian genocide. Being the first class on campus to solely study genocide, the class hopes to spread awareness and make changes across the community through their library book displays, campus film screenings, and the publishing of their own work in a book. To learn more about the class and their investigation, visit www.genocideinvestigation.weebly.com. I recently sat down with the Human Rights Club and found out what they are also doing to help internationally. In the face of staggering global death tolls, child soldiers, and widespread starvation, one club on campus has decided to take a stand. There were a lot of issues going on in the world that no one really knew about, and they were new to all of the people in our class. So we thought, what can we do about some of these issues like human trafficking, exploitation of workers in the global economy, and things like that. So we decided there needed to be a club to raise some awareness about these issues, and because all of the students felt that they wanted to get involved. The Human Rights Club is made up of 10 students who are actively fighting for human rights around the world. The things that the CUC Human Rights Club have been working on are um, informing people about sweatshops, especially how women are exploited in all these different countries and how we have to be aware consumers and how we, what we can do to stop it. Through fundraisers and activities, the club has raised hundreds of dollars for international and domestic charities. The Human Rights Club has worked on a number of projects so far this year, including a fair trade bake sale. We raised over $100 through that bake sale, and we of course donated proceeds to the International Labor Rights Forum. We also hosted a fair trade banana giveaway, and we, we gave away about 100 bananas that day. Though small in size, the club seeks to spread awareness and advocacy throughout the community. Their hope? To spur change. And by this time next year, the Human Rights Club hopes to be partnered up with various agencies and schools located in and around the Chicagoland area in hopes of further prom promoting fair trade product use, among many other avenues of activism. The Human Rights Club meets every Monday at 11 a.m. in Addison 203. Now, the semester is coming to a close, and so too are the activities that the Human Rights Club is doing. However, they will start up next semester, so keep an eye out on your email, and you'll find out about more events and ways you can join in. Samantha Bredesen, WCGR News. I really like how they're pushing for free trade goods. Yeah, it'll be needed if everything comes together when trying to work with the organizations throughout Chicago. Definitely. And now your CUC Sports Update. The Cougar baseball team has been nothing short of stellar this season. They are currently ranked first in conference, fifth in the Midwest region, and 22nd nationally. They've excelled behind some big game pitching and solid at-bats. They will be headed to rival Concordia, Wisconsin for the conference playoffs this week. The team is hoping that the trip to Mequon will be one of many on their playoff run. And quite frankly, it looks like they have the horses to do so. Very exciting for the baseball team. Now let's check out what our field reporter Kamel has in store for us as he goes out and questions CUC students about current events. Today's our third and final installment of the WCGR TV News Challenge. We scoured campus and asked five unsuspecting CUC students about current events. The topics range from sports to politics and also entertainment. We had some funny, but also some pretty insightful responses. So how about we just go check it out? Ooh, I didn't pay attention to the direct this year. It's not Ricardo Hurley. <laughs> Obviously. Uh, Give me something. I know he was a lineman. I can't remember the name, though. All right, name me the number two pick. I literally did not pay attention at Third all. pick. I the Bears pick. The Bears pick? Uh, Kyle, wasn't it Kyle Long or something like that? Yeah, I'm disappointed. <laughs> that would be the Cougar Games, directed by Nicole Christ. Shout out to her. Can I get bonus points? Huh? You're trying to get bonus well, points? Well, you know, you know, you know. I just got the last one wrong. I had to add a little extra you. flavor on the one. We don't give extra credit. He's retiring. Mm -hmm. Never been yeah. active for someone on the August uh, 16th, right? Oh. Give me a hug. So, 
something, Montreal, Montreal something. Mm -hmm. Montreal, we'll Maple Leafs. Yeah, Toronto. Toronto. So Montreal, Toronto. Uh, Chicago. Mm -hmm. Blackhawks. New York. Uh huh. Wait, there's two teams in New York though. The you Rangers. Got yes. Oh man! Oh man! Oh got man! Got two more. Okay, let me think. Um, Detroit. Mm -hmm. Got one more. The city's been in the news a lot recently. Not Boston. True. Yes. Who are you? I am asking you, the host, questions. As though you don't know, my name is Jared Solis. I am the cameraman. I'm behind the scenes when it comes to KML segment. Did not make the point. Did you're not just trying to rub it into me. You're just trying to rub it into me, aren't right, you? Right, man. I'm not rubbing anything into you. It's a good question. You know, it's a legit question. If you know your NBA stuff, you'll be able to say. My Dallas Mavericks. You're oh man. Bummer. That's what he wanted. Bummer. See K-Mel in the hot seat. I know. Just checking up on his credibility for being host worthy. Well, tonight here on the show we have author of we have the author, that is, of The Whales Boy, Rachel Greenbaum. How are you doing? Hi, thank you guys so much for having me here today. Yeah. So can you tell us a little bit about your book? Sure. Um, well, it's a young adult fiction novel, so that's basically it's from the ages for young adults that is like maybe like nine all the way up until 16. But then I've also had some people that were a little bit older in their 20s that read it also. And um, it's about a young girl that basically moves to Flossmore. For those of you guys who don't know, it's actually um, a suburb here in Illinois. So the book is actually based in Chicago, which is okay. something really interesting. So Chicago pride kind of shown throughout the book. And um, it's about a young girl that actually loses her mother, so she's completely uprooted from her friends and family, and she's completely taken out of her comfort zone, and she moves into this mansion. And um, for those of you guys who like Ghostbusters and like all that like paranormal type stuff, mm -hmm. this book would be for you also, awesome. because it has a little twist inside of there. So she moves into this mansion, basically, and she hears this ghostly tale. And of course, when we all hear about stuff like that, we're like, oh, that's so stupid, you know, mm -hmm. that. <laughs> that stuff isn't real, and that's what she thinks. But um, the more she begins to create stories to gain popularity when she, you know, attends high school, the more real things seem to become. And she realizes that she too is a key element inside her own stories and her own tale. Interesting. Very Interesting. much so. That sounds really good. So, <laughs> can you tell us what exactly goes into making a novel? Well, I like to say you start off with a huge pot. And everything, like different elements, goes into making a story. Um, I would have to say that you have to have a love for it no matter what because any writer that has ever written something before, you know that if you get writer's block, you just have to keep going into it mm -hmm. and just put it back and push it back for a little bit and just keep writing. So I think once it becomes something dear to your heart and once you become so one with your characters, it doesn't become a story or a project. It becomes something that you're writing for the love of it. So I think the main thing that a writer should get and like you said, going into a story, is just basically do it for the love of it. Just have this relationship when you're building your characters and just do it for a lot of fun. Great. So when did you decide to become an author then? I mean, you're so young. Yeah. <laughs> it's actually, it all started um, when I was actually a little girl, mm -hmm. how um, a lot of people would write in their diaries. I would just write stories and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. So that was like my coping mechanism in like preteens and stuff like that for, uh, you know, coping with a lot of things. So I basically started writing. And um, I would write short stories and like poems and stuff like that. And mm -hmm. I had this giant book that I had under my bed. And I would just write a ton of stories. And from then on, um, I had this idea for The Whale's Boy. And it kind of stuck with me. And I was like, you know what? This isn't leaving me alone, this idea. Mm -hmm. So might as well write it down. And I finished it. And that's how it became my project and the trilogy that it is to this day. Awesome. Great. That's really good. That's Thank really cool. So what kind of advice would you give to young authors? Oh, the advice that I would give to young authors is that I would definitely tell them to not give up on their dream. Um, we hear this in any type of business that we go into, in modeling and acting and writing. Everyone is going to tell you no. But if it's your time and if it's meant to happen, you just have to keep you know, going and keep pushing hard because the more no's that I get, 
I know that there's going to be a yes in there somewhere. So yeah. I would have to say the more negativity that you get, you have to turn that negativity into optimism, into positivity, and just keep going and keep rooting for the stars, basically. I love that. That's so empowering. Thank you. So, I mean, you brought the book with you today. Yes, I Can did. you read a little bit for us then? Sure. Um, I won't give too much away for those of you who actually do want to read it. There's actually a free snippet of it on Amazon that you can read the first couple of chapters. Okay. So that's always something interesting. Why, you know, go in if you don't like something so you can always just read it on there. But um, I'm just going to read you guys the prologue and it's kind of eerie. So bear with me here. <laughs> okay. He laid on the ground with his blue eyes half ajar and his mouth open as if his last words were a mere scream. His body was flat on the brown wooden floor and crimson blood spread in a circle underneath him. His arms were flat against his sides and his palms were turned upwards. His dark hair was matted where the blood had flown from his head. His face was unmasked and deathly pale. He was dead. The culprit sat in the corner of the attic shaking back and forth. His mind was a blur and he was unsure of what he had just done. A blood-soaked ax rested on the floor next to him. His hands twitched. He whispered slurred words to himself, shocked at what he had just done. A girl's agonizing screech came from the other side of the room. You shouldn't have disobeyed me, boy, he cried at the body as if it could respond. He repeated the words over and over again in his mind, breathing hoarsely. He pulled his dark hair back. He smirked to himself as he took another look at the body, realizing that he was pleased at what he had just done. And this is just basically the how everything happened. Okay. So it gives you a little bit of an overview of what the story is to come, or what the tale is, the ghost story is to come. Sounds eerie. Definitely. Wow. Dun, Sounds dun, dun. like a book worth reading. It's very Thank interesting. You. Definitely. So check it out on Amazon. Yes. At yes. The Whale's Boy. Thank you very much for your time, Rachel. Yes. Thank you, guys. Thank you. For WCGR, I'm Julius Little. And I'm Samantha Bredesen. It's been a great school year here at WCGR-TV, and I can't wait to see you again next semester. Thank you, and have a good night.